what we're going to do next is what I call equational reasoning, although this is just giving a fancy name to a very simple concept. It's reasoning about the equality of two programs using that notion of equality on expressions that we just defined. Let's start with an example involving higher order functions. Back when we learned higher order functions, we studied the function twice, which applies the function f to its argument x twice. We also learned about function composition. For example, if you want to compose two functions f and g, uh, you could define that as apply g to x and then apply f to that. Compose those two functions. Well, let's notice something here. If you run twice hx for some function h and some input x, what does that evaluate to? We know from studying the evaluation semantics of OCaml that we substitute h for f, and therefore we get h applied to hx. Well, suppose you took compose and passed h in as both its first and second arguments, that is, as both f and g then that would evaluate to h applied to h applied to x. So both of these pieces of code involving twice and compose end up evaluating to the same intermediate expression. Therefore, twice hx equals compose hhx. Why is that? Well, you can follow it by transitivity from twice to hhx to compose. All of these are going to evaluate to the same value. That's why they're equal. Here's another way of structuring the claim that I just made, and it's a widely known proof format in the field of verification. Uh, it's uh, attributed to a person named Vim Feyen. We start at the top with one piece of code. We end with another piece of code at the bottom, and there's a transitive chain of equalities between them. Those equalities are outdented and the code is indented. And on each line where we write an equality, we don't write code with it. Instead, we write a justification of the proof step. I'm going to put those justifications in curly braces, although uh, of all the variants on this notation, exactly which choice of delimiter to use there is probably the one on which there's the most variation. So I'm going to ask you to please use this proof format as you work through examples and learn this material. It is one that's part of the uh, vocabulary of this area, if you will. A second example. Let's look at more detail at composition. So we had our compose function already. Let me actually introduce a binary operator for it, written less than, less than, although I'll continue to pronounce it compose. The mnemonic there is that we're kind of running things from right to left, because if you have f compose g, well, first, when you apply that to an argument x, you run it through g first and then f. The theorem I'd like to show is that composition is associative. That is, if you have a quantity f compose g, then compose h, that's the same as f compose quantity g compose h. Well, to prove that, we're going to need to use extensionality, because we're trying to prove the equality of two functions here. So by extensionality, two functions are equal if they produce the same output when applied to the same input. So we need to show that for all x, uh, the expression on the left here, f compose g compose h applied to x, is equal to the expression on the right, f compose quantity g compose h applied to x. OK, let's do that proof. I've put the claim that we want to prove up here at the top. Uh, and also at the very top, I've reminded us of what the definition of composition is. So one strategy for doing these kinds of proofs is to do them in a kind of two-column format. I'm going to start with the expression on the left in one column and the expression on the right in another column. And my goal is to work to get the two columns to end up in the same place take a sequence of equality steps in each of those columns and eventually end up with the same expression at the bottom of both of them. So I'll start on the left here. By evaluation, I know what's going to happen if I apply that expression to x. Um, and the reason I know that is because I have this definition of composition up here, I know that I'm going to take h and apply it to x. 
So H is fulfilling the role of F2 in the original definition. From that, I could take another step of evaluation because I know what Compose is going to do here. It's going to apply uh, G to the result of HX and then apply F. To now, I'm kind of stuck at that point. There's nothing further I know about how to evaluate that expression because I don't know what F, G, or H are. I don't even know what X is. So here's where I switch over to the other column and try to make progress there. By evaluation, I know that the result of that expression is going to be G compose H applied to X because G compose H is playing the role of F2 in that definition of composition. I can take another step of, comp of, of computation here. That ends up with F applied to G H X. And now, ah, I have both columns ending at the same place. Those two expressions are the same. So now I've shown the equality of those original two expressions on the left and right hand side. And I can say I'm done. QED, uh, which our own Professor Gries likes to joke, means quit, end, done. What I encourage you to do next is to put away this slide, just write down those expressions we wanted to prove the equality of and the definition of composition, and work through the proof yourself without looking back at the slide. That should help uh, instill in your brain exactly what the thought process is for doing this kind of proof.